Alrighty. Well, it's 7.04. Uh, we'll be able to get the show on the road. That way we can continue with our evening. So thank you for all the families for, for tuning in today. Uh, I'm really excited, you know, as, as excited as you can be for financial aid information. I'm excited uh, because we have a rock star team over here today uh, to be able to give all of you a really great uh, presentation, uh, be able to get you a little bit more information, uh, but also be able to have the opportunity to ask any questions that you have um, or anything that you, you know, that's really kind of a burning question. So uh, today uh, we have uh, two folks on here, but as they're going through their presentation, if you do have any questions at any time, you are more than welcome to submit the questions via chat. Um, at the end, we will open it up for questions where we'll be able to, you know, field any questions if you want to unmute yourself, but feel free while the presentation is going on. If you have any questions, I'm going to be checking out the chat. Uh, you could send them in, send them right there. So I'm just going to keep admitting folks as they're, they're popping in here. But my name is Kyle Schwindler. I work right in the admissions office. Um, I think some of you are a mixture of maybe some families at high school versus some students that are coming in this fall. Um, so it is going to be a nice big group to be able to kind of get some good info today. So the big reason why you're here is for some financial aid and uh, student accounts questions. So uh, I will definitely turn it over to the two gems uh, that know the, all the info uh, that we, we turn to the most. So um, that's Katie Kosas and Jacob over here. So we'll turn it over to them and let them be able to, to, to get rolling. Thank you, Katie, and thank you, Jacob. Um, hello, good evening, everybody. My name is Katie Kosas. I'm the Director of Financial Aid here at Niagara, also proud alum, um, also, as is Jacob, who will introduce himself in a second. Um, so I'm from Financial Aid. Jacob is from Student Accounts, um, and we are going to go over any questions you might have. There really, really is no formal presentation per se, um, and we are, I mean, I was under the impression that this is mostly students who are deposited and who are coming in, um, starting in the fall. Um, so if you're not, Feel free to ask any questions, but this will be geared more towards, um, you know, students who are starting in uh, just a few short months at Niagara. Uh, one thing I wanted, I'm sorry, Jacob, did you want to say anything before I go into the? No, that's okay. We can start. I'm I'm Jacob Copera. I'm the director of student accounts and continue, Katie. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, so uh, if you are a parent or family of someone starting in fall 22, uh, we did mail out. Um, probably almost a month ago, maybe at this point, uh, time is escaping me, everything's going by so quickly. Um, it is, I'm gonna hold this up so you can see it. I know it's blurred, I'm sorry, but it's the green checklist um, that was mailed out. It was addressed to the parents of, if you attended summer orientation, we also gave uh, a copy of it in the parents' um, handout as well as the student's handout. So if your student didn't attend with a parent, they did receive a copy again as well. Um, I, I'm going to go through it just now, just so everyone's on the same page of where you need to be um, heading into the semester. Uh, so the first thing um, is that, well, first off, hopefully everyone has completed a FAFSA form. If you are a U.S. citizen, that's the first step. Hopefully you've done that and you've received a financial aid package from us. Um, so assuming you have received a package from us, um, the next thing you need to do is to log in to the WebAdvisor self-service portal to review your package and decide whether you want to accept or reject your loans. So that's really the first step of um, process and moving forward with the process. If you are accepting your loans, you're going to have to do a couple additional steps. There's the master promissory note and the entrance counseling. Um, these are things that should be completed by the student. Um, they are loans, federal loans, the student's name. Um, definitely, I recommend if families want to sit, sit together and do that, fantastic. But really, the student needs to be doing it themselves um, as it is for the loans that are in their name. So those are two separate things, the master promissory note and the entrance counseling, both electronic. You do them online at studentaid.gov. Um, but they do need to be completed before the loans can disperse onto the account. Um, the next thing is to create the student's mobile financial aid account. Um, it is a separate system, technically. Um, it's really just so that if we ever do need any additional documentation, you can upload that securely. Um, some students have already created it. Um, it's very simple to do. Just go to um, niagara.verifymyfafsa.com. And I can throw this in the chat too, but niagara.verifymyfafsa.com is where you will go to um, create the account um, you just need the student's purple pass credentials to log in and then answer some, you know, basic, you know, uh, questions as far as, you know, 
first name, last name, date of birth, just confirm all those things. Um, so those are the things should be done, you know, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Um, if you are a New York State resident, you also need to make sure that you are completing your New York State TAP application. Um, again, it's only if you're a New York State resident, um, you should be completing this. Um, you can check with us or check online to see if it's been completed or make sure it has our school code on it. Um, you'd go to hesc.ny.gov for that um, directly um, to make sure that our school code is on there and that it's completed. Um, and then also I wanted to mention our level tuition plan option for students who are freshman students entering this fall of 22. Uh, we do have an option to lock the, your tuition rate in for four consecutive years. Um, so how that works is that you would pay $500 more than normal tuition for this year, so $250 a semester, but then that amount, that 30, it, it's going to be $35,900 for this year, it locks, stay the same for sophomore, junior, and senior year. So you're locked in at that tuition rate while normal tuition, you know, will typically increase anywhere between two to 4% each year. Um, so that is an option that is um, uh, available for students who are freshman students entering fall 22, you can go ahead and do that. You'll sign up for that in your admissions welcome portal. I just sent out an email yesterday, I believe, um, to students who had not yet signed up for it. You don't have to, it's just an option for you, but an email did go out yesterday with instructions on how to do that. Again, it is in the admissions welcome portal. Um, there is a deadline, there's a hard deadline. We had recommended it by July 19th, just so that the bill was correct when it went out. If you haven't signed up, it's still okay, but you need to do it by, I think we said September 3rd or September 4th, Jacob. It's that first like Friday into the semester. Um, it needs to be done by then. If you don't do it after that, you're out of luck, unfortunately. I think Katie, that would be, so if we want, if we're going with Friday, it would be September 2nd. That would be oh, okay. the end of the last first week of classes. So that would okay. kind of coincide with the end of open ed and drop. Yes, yes, thank you. I just couldn't remember the exact day. <laughs> um, and then the last thing, well, actually there's two more things I wanted to mention um, on, from the checklist that we sent out is um, for, uh, the bill has gone out by now. I'm sure everyone has received that. Um, so students can actually add parents or anybody else as an authorized user. Jacob can probably touch more on this. Um, but if you go into the TouchNet system, you can, uh, add an authorized user so parents or guardians can view um, and make payments on the student's behalf. Um, so they have access to see all that as well. So make sure they sign you up for that. And then lastly, is that um, if you want, yeah, you have the bill now, if you are looking to take out an additional loan to help cover either the entire balance or a portion of the balance, um, you need to start looking into those now. Um, there's two main options for that. There is the parent plus loan, and this is a federal loan in the parent's name. Um, you can do that again at studentaid.gov um, using, you know, parents using your own credentials, um, your uh, federal student ID to log into that and apply. Um, that's a relatively quick process. That for the PLUS loan, you find out within like five minutes of applying, the school Niagara finds out the next day. However, if you are going for a private student loan, now this is a loan that will be in the student's name, but they'll need a co-signer for it. This can take quite a few weeks to process. Um, so if that's the way you want to go, please make sure you start doing that now so that the money can be in place by the time school um, starts in you know, late August, early September. So uh, make sure you start looking into those um, areas now if that's what you um, are going to do to help pay the remaining balance. Okay, that was the checklist that we sent out um, and also went home um, or, you know, was sent home and also we provided it some orientation to both the student and the parent. So make sure you review that um, and get those items done with your student. Uh, again, hopefully prior to the semester starting, it's just a lot easier that way. I started sending out emails to students um, this week. So Tuesday, all the loan emails went out and then Wednesday, yesterday, um, like the level tuition plan emails went out, the mobile financial aid account, TAP, like reminding students to do something if we don't yet have it. So have them check their Niagara emails. I know some are still going to their personal emails that will change shortly. IT is working on switching them all over to their student emails, um, but they should be checking um, both personal and their Niagara emails um, so they don't miss any of the important uh, stuff that we send out. Jacob, do you have anything to add to that? 
Well, I just wanted to go over a couple of important dates from a student account standpoint, and I just wanted to kind of expand on the, the authorized user link um, within the TouchNet billing platform. So your student just needs to know your email address. And once they enter that into the authorized user link, then you will get an invitation to sign up for the TouchNet billing platform for your student. And then you can access everything as Kaylee outlined, making payments on your student's behalf, um, what's really nice about it too is if you are an authorized user, we send a bill file once a month. If a student has an outstanding balance still, you'll get a notification as well, um, letting you know that there's a that there is a bill to view. So that'll kind of just be like an extra um, point of contact for you. Um, the payment due date for the fall is August 22nd. It's it's one week before classes. So we just ask that either payment in full is made by then, or you have all your financial aid in place following that green checklist that Katie outlined, or you can sign up for one of our payment plans. So payment plans, interest-free, everybody that applies is approved. There's just a $25 fee for that. And it allows you to split your out-of-pocket bill into four or five equal payments for the semester. So if you do want the five-month plan, that starts August 1st, that's the first due date, or if you opt for the four month plan, it starts September 1st and both of those run through December 1st. Um, and a couple other things I just wanted to touch on really quick is mandatory health insurance for all full-time students. So if you are a full-time US student or in other words, a domestic student, you will probably see a health insurance charge on your student's bill of $2,632. If you have your own health insurance um, that's valid within New York State, within 50 miles of the campus, you can opt out of the university health insurance. There are links on the health services website. Um, and there are, we can, we can put that link in the chat in a little while as well. So if you still see that charge, um, the, the waivers have been updated as of this afternoon. So if you submitted a waiver anytime after this afternoon, it wouldn't be effective yet. Um, it does take about two weeks for everything to be processed and for us to reverse the charge on the account. So just keep that in mind. And there is a hard deadline for that of September 30th. But if you're still seeing the charge on the bill, I would recommend taking care of that within the next week or so. So we can get the charge off of there and we don't have to worry about it. Um, and then also all students are opted into our first day book program. So we partner with Barnes and Noble, the bookstore on campus, and there's a $200 fee per semester uh, for any full-time student. And it covers all their textbook rentals with the bookstore. They go off of their schedule and they'll have all of their books ready before the first day of class for pickup in the bookstore. Um, they just have to return the books at the end of the semester, but it's a really nice deal. It's really convenient for our students. Um, if so, if they want to utilize the program, they don't have to do anything except pick up their books. And if they do want to opt out on our MyNU portal, there is a link to opt out of that. Um, because some students, if they don't want to participate in the program, if they'd rather purchase their books or maybe some of their, their classes don't require the books and it just doesn't work for them this semester, they can always opt out before classes begin as well. And it looks like we have a couple questions in the chat. Katie, I know you were, so you responded to some of them. Yeah, I'm Links are on the green sheet that was uh, mailed out, but I am going to put them in the, the chat as well, uh, where to go, the things I talked about. Then I do see Blue Cross of Blue Shield of Western New York just changed to Highmark. It's, it's not an option when filling out the health insurance waiver. I would recommend, I will put it in the chat in just a moment. I would recommend contacting Haler directly, the health insurance broker. They will help you with that. Um, we have Blue Cross of Blue Shield of Western New York at Niagara University, so our employees are also um, going through that same thing, and our employees that have children there, they've successfully opted out of the coverage, um, but it may, it may require a phone call to Haler, so if you're not seeing that, so I will drop that in the chat along with the, um, the opt-out link as well. Katie, I had a question uh, come in to me for the TouchNet billing, uh, or Jacob, both of you could 
probably answer this for the touchnet billing they can access that through web advisor that is correct yes it can be accessed through web advisor as long as you are a u.s based student if you are a canadian student you do need to access that externally so i can also drop that link in the chat as well i think we missed one question earlier jacob um when um i'll be ready to set up the payment plan i still can't set up any payments i would so you should definitely be able to set up the payment plan it is opened um, the only thing that may be hindering you from that is if there is more financial aid or loans than there are charges. So if it's showing a credit balance that would prevent you from signing up for the payment plan, it could be that the student's schedule is not finalized or room and board is not finalized. So maybe all the charges aren't added or it could be a case of maybe needing to reject a loan what I would recommend contacting our office directly. So we, we are open 8.30 to noon tomorrow and one of our customer service representatives could take like a deeper look into it and see exactly what's going on with your student's account and why they may not be able to sign up for the payment plan right now. Everyone automatically enrolled in the book program unless they opt out, correct? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Uh, and the bill sent to students now your email or personal email? The bill, in, all information is sent to the students Niagara University email address. So it's very important that they check, they check that. Can I just step in for one second? If your student has not accessed their new student email, it's, it's pretty easy to set up and find access to. Um, all they have to do is log into MyNU. Uh, when they log into MyNU, again, all their username is going to be their student number with that lowercase s, and that password is universal for all the access uh, for all the portals, which I know we have a lot of them. But MyNU, when you log in there, um, across the top, there's some icons. Email is one of those icons. They can click on that, and it'll automatically redirect them to their uh, Niagara University email account. I'm assuming most of the students have checked that by now, just with roommate assignments going out, orientation leader sending that if they haven't, but that's where you can find it. But one point that I do wanna make, um, if your student has not download, downloaded the Gmail app, uh, they can download the Gmail app and set up their, their NU student email. Um, at, it's a Google account, so they can just set it up very simple um, and have that set up on their phone with notifications. Because from this point forward, um, if there's any holds, if there's a snow day, class gets canceled, all of that is gonna be sent directly to their, their new student email, not the one that they use on their application. So uh, I definitely encourage all the folks to, to set that up on the Gmail, that way that they are checking that regularly and have, having those notifications. All right, we got a couple other questions in here too. How can we verify if the bill reflects the level tuition plan? Um. Jake, it, like on their bill, it would say level tuition plan for the tuition charge, correct? That is correct. So the it will say, it will specify level tuition plan, but it will also be at the $17,950 rate. So if you are not seeing that on the bill, um, we can always, we can also verify that. Um, so if you're unsure after you view the bill, just shoot our office an email and we can verify that your student is on the level tuition plan. Yeah, if, it's, if you signed up for the level tuition plan just within the last week or so, um, the person who codes that's on vacation this week, so it might be a little delayed as far as it being reflected in the bill if it's been more than a week, um, but those will be updated when he gets back um, next week. Uh, can I make the point too, I know I've had a lot of my students who are under the age of 18 this week oh, yes. been, uh, getting that parent signature. Yes, so um, for the level tuition plan, the student does have to be 18. Um, so if they're 18 or over, they can sign up and, on their own in, um, in their welcome portal. If they are under the age of 18, they will need a parent, just one parent to sign off on it. So they will still sign up online, 
they'll get an op, they'll get a little message saying you have to, you know, print this and have a parent sign and return. You can email that as soon as the parent signs, you can email, scan a copy and send it into my office or mail it, whichever works. Uh, but yes, uh, if you are under the age of 18, a parent, one parent who does have to sign. Uh, we are pretty much if it's been more than two weeks and we still haven't received it, we are following up with the students. Um, so, but for the most part, people have been getting this back to us. So that's, that's been great. So I'm seeing, so there's a question, how many books can the student rent for the $200? So that covers all materials for the semester. So if, as long as their professor requested a book through the bookstore, um, it covers the books and any access codes that go through the bookstore. Um, and the $200 is just for the fall semester. So it's $200 per semester. Um, and if a student's part-time for whatever reason, so 11 credit hours or less, it's $40 per class instead. And then yeah. if, if they opt out, will they have a list of the book that they will need? Yes, they can still go to the bookstore with their schedule and see what books are um, being requested. Or I believe on the bookstore's website, you can kind of like put in your schedule and it will tell you what books you need based on the specific class number and section. Yep, absolutely. Those those books, um, if some professors might require three books per class, one professor might require one book. Um, so all of those, you know, depending on the number of the books that the professor requests, that is included in the 200. So it is, it's a really convenient, easy way to get the books. Uh, you know, when I was a student, we didn't have this option. So I, I really recommend just staying opted in with this. It's, mm -hmm. it's a really, really convenient feature. Of the university. And it looks like we have a payment plan question. So if you make a down payment, it basically, that's that's outside of the plan. So if you owe $10,000 and your payments would be $2,000 per month, if you put $5,000 down and you're on the five month plan, your payments would still would be $1,000 per month on the remaining 5,000. Um, and same thing, it doesn't matter if you're four or five month plan, if you put a down payment down, that does not count towards a payment. And then if you make a payment at any point in time outside of the plan, it basically reduces the plan budget. So it would change the remaining payments. Um, so if, you're, if you think you did anything funky when you made a payment and you think it should be counted in the plan budget and it wasn't, just contact our office. We can override things at our end if something weird happened. Let's see. So it looks like there's a question on vaccine in here. Um, so the COVID booster before school, uh, that is um, a question definitely you can reach out to health at niagara.edu. Um, the, health uh, the health office on campus would be able to, to help you get things submitted. Um, I do know that we are not requiring the booster uh, for incoming and in, incoming enrolled students. Uh, so if you would like to update that information, you can send that directly to health at niagara.edu um, and be able to upload that uh, information in there. And correct me if there's any other additional information, Katie or Jacob. Okay. No, that's, that sounds correct. All right, there's another question for the TAP application on FAFSA site. Yeah, so um, you can no longer, I know like when you originally completed the FAFSA form at the very end, there was like an option for you to transfer your information from the FAFSA to the state application. But if you didn't do it at that time, you then have to directly go to the TAP website, which I did put in the um, chat earlier, but it's HESC, H-E-S-C, dot gov is where you will go directly to complete the TAP application. Um, so again, if you didn't do it right when you were doing your FAFSA, probably almost a year ago at this point or whenever, you have to go directly to the New York State website, hesk.ny.gov. All right, we have another question in here about uh, level tuition plan and just verifying that it is on their account. But, I mean, you can definitely, um, if you want to email the office, uh, we can look that up for you, um, fao at niagara.edu. Uh, we can look it up to make sure that we uh, received the, the signed contract and that, um, again, if it's been within the last week, we have had the contract, but just won't be updated on the bill. Okay. 
So I think we've successfully worked our way through the questions here. So well, I think there was another there was another question about if the if the student didn't have the booster. Um, yeah, the the health office uh, would definitely be able to assist and be able to kind of uh, help out with any of the questions related to the vaccine. Uh, they are phenomenal office. They've been working really hard being able to kind of tackle those emails and be able to get back to families along with being able to update the, uh, the other requirements coming into the university. Um, so being able to upload that in there, you can, if you have that information, you can send that directly. Again, that their email is health at niagara.edu and they should be able to assist you getting that uploaded in there. If the, we were told orientation, the student didn't have a booster and they were exposed, they'd have to quarantine. I'm afraid I am not aware of our updated policy, so it probably would be a question to ask health services. Um, right, Kyle, I would think. Yeah, health services would be able to, to give you the, the most updated uh, protocols uh, yeah. for the university and the students. Um, if you reject one of your loans and it says that a financial counselor has to review what's the time frame. I'm actually the one who the one who reviews all those. Um, I do on a daily basis. I am if you just did it today, um, like after this morning, um, I'm off tomorrow. But on Monday, I will review those again. So um, and the students do get an email um, notification when I approve the the loan rejection. So they'll know when um, when it's been approved. Pell Grant is from, it's a federal grant from the FAFSA form um, that when uh, you fill out the FAFSA form, depending upon what your financial contribution is on there is, the EFC um, determines whether or not you're going to be eligible for the Pell Grant. Um, the TAP Grant is the New York State Award. So it is two separate things and two separate applications. Okay, Katie, I had a question. Or, I don't know. I always defer to Katie. I'm sorry, Jacob. The two of you. Uh, I have a question sent directly to me. If uh, can you pay for the year uh, if you've already initiated a payment from five twenty nine? So we bill, we that is a very good question. We bill by semester, so you you could pay for the fall in full, but we won't be billing for the spring semester until December. Um, so we do not accept any prepayments. So you would need to wait until charges are assessed by mid December in order to actually make a payment on the spring bill, but you can definitely pay fall in full at this time. I just wanted to um, go back to the one, I had another thought on the Pell and the TAP. Just because um, you aren't eligible for Pell does not mean that you won't be eligible for TAP. They're two separate things determined upon by two separate criteria. Um, so still, I always recommend at least for your first year, definitely still apply for the TAP grant just to see um, if you are eligible through the, through the state for that. Right. Uh, Jacob, just to follow up, uh, if somebody did like pay for the full year, but you're only accepting for the fall, um, would that just be refunded or how would that work? Yes. If there was any overpayment, we would refund that to you. Um, we, we do not want to hold on to an overpayment just in case um, circumstances change or contact information changes, we want to make sure we can get that money back to you successfully. Um, so we would refund any overpayment. Thank you. Um, how long does it take the financial aid site and you'd update after completing document steps? Um, typically about 24 hours. So if you are completing like the entrance counseling and master promissory note, um, those are done on the federal sites and then they have to come to our office electronically. So. Typically, again, about one business day for those to update. Um, and then again, if it's some of the other things like the little financial aid account, about one business day. So um, again, maybe give it a couple of days um, as some of this has to be manually done. Um, and if somebody's out on vacation, um, it might take a couple extra days, especially over the summer. But yeah, within one to two days, you should see that those have been updated. determined. I'm assuming you're talking about maybe like our endowed scholarships, um, because otherwise the scholar, you know, the financial aid packages, as long as there's a FAFSA, you received an award letter from us, those are already in there. Um, and if the students registered, those have started to disperse. 
for the Art Endowed Scholarships. Uh, we are working through that. It's a slow process, unfortunately, um, but we are going through and awarding those scholarships. So if their student has not yet um, applied for those on our Scholarship Opportunity Search or SOS portal, um, it's right in my NU. It's really not a separate portal. It's just right within my NU um, under like, usually like the resources tab up top. Um, they can go ahead and apply for those. Um, our goal is to have those awarded by the time school starts. Um, so again, we've already started and we'll be working on those throughout the next month. So there's a, another follow-up question about health insurance. Will it be listed on the second semester bill? So if you have opted out of health insurance for the fall, you are opted out for the full academic year for 2022-2023. So we, we get students to opt out or opt in because some students do need to take the health insurance. Um, it is decent insurance for the cost of it, um, but you will not see it on your second semester bill if you had the charge on fall and you've opted out. Um, that's good for the full year. And then just keep in mind that around the same time next year in July that your student would need to opt out again. Another thing I do want to mention because circumstances do change, um, you know, job loss or even it probably won't happen right now with this group, but just something to keep in mind if your student ages off of your health insurance plan mid-year or whatnot, it always is an option if they've opted out at the beginning of the fall semester and say in December, January, whatever circumstances change and they need health insurance, they can contact our broker to enroll in the plan for the remainder of the year for a prorated cost. Um, so that is always an option for the student. Um, and they can contact our office and we can point them in the right direction or contact the broker directly. <clears throat> I had a question sent to me directly. Um, if you find money to cover more of the balance than needed by direct loan, will the loan be adjusted? So it, nothing will be adjusted automatically. Um, or are you trying to, okay, can you reread the question? <laughs> If you find money to cover more of the balance than needed by a direct loan, will the loan be adjusted? So there's kind of two different scenarios here. So if, if you find money as if like you get like an outside private scholarship or something that we need to put into your package and it, if it puts you over you know, your cost of tenants or something, we will we'll reduce the loan that way. But I'm assuming what potentially what they're saying is that, you know, you just, you found some money, you got, came into some money and you're able to make a payment on the account. Um, that will not automatically reduce the loan. You'll have to contact our office and let us know how much you want to reduce the loan by, and we will certainly do that for you. Um, I hope that's, just, well, if that didn't answer your question, let us know. Okay, they just, they, there's a follow-up question. Um, they took out a direct loan uh, plus, a plus loan. Uh, before they found the additional money. I see. Okay. Um, well, kind of the same thing applies. Um, we don't want to automatically reduce that um, for the for the parent plus loan unless for some reason another award is making you go over your cost of attendance. Um, so if you want to reduce your plus loan, again, just have the parent, whichever parent took out the plus loan, email our office and we will reduce that by whatever amount you would like. I had a question sent directly to me, but I'm Katie, I'm going to let you take this one. Okay. For the SOS scholarships, awards, mm -hmm. or grants, if they took new stuff and their GPA shows up very skewed, will this impact their odds? No, yeah, I know what you're saying because um, it like uh, for a new step student, they already have a GPA in there technically. Mm -hmm. um, no, not really, because a lot of the freshman ones don't really require a specific uh, GPA because most don't have one coming in. Um, we'll still look at it based upon high school GPA. We won't look into, you know, we know that they're not a transfer student coming in. So we wouldn't look at their GPA if they're a freshman. It's only be off their high school average. I hope that even if, even if the GPA automatically loaded in when they applied for it, like some of them require the GPA on it in order to apply for it. Yeah, I'm a, the GPA is either going off of, I mean, for most incoming scholarships not going to be asking for like a three point something GPA because they don't have that yet. It'll be going off of like their high school average. 
students can still go, even if they don't like auto match to something, they can still go ahead and apply for it. And then when we review on our end, we can see whether that GPA was coming from a new step course or not. Does that answer your question? Yes, that's perfect. I was just okay. worried about that. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. I don't have any other questions sent over to me. And I think, oh, I think we have able to answer all of the ones in the chat. Um, so Katie and Jacob, was there anything else that you wanted to add in here? Um, I mean, I guess the only other thing we can, we can touch on really quick for our, any of our students living on campus, um, their, their meal plans included in their cost of room and board. So, our students are all automatically enrolled in our carte blanche meal plan, which gives them unlimited access to the dining hall each week and a $100 declining balance loaded onto their ID card to spend in the Gallagher Center snack bar and whatnot. Um, oh, someone's actually asking about Literally that. Literally asked so, that so, question, so it's great so, timing. So, we were we read each other's minds. Yeah. Um, so basically everybody's automatically enrolled in the carte blanche meal plan and students do have the first, I believe two weeks of the semester to change their meal plan election if they want. Um, they can start doing that a couple of weeks before school. It's probably still a little bit too early. And the other option would be the purple meal plan, which is 12 entrances to the dining hall. So it limits the entrances but it gives them a larger declining balance of $250 in Gallagher Gold. And it looks like the question is, is the carte blanche with the $100 included as part of the charges shown on the student account activity invoice? So the answer to that would be if you see room and board listed on your student's bill, um, the standard rate $6,350. If you see that, then yes, that is included. Um, the only exceptions would be, which this really would not apply to freshman students, would be a student in the apartments or a student in Varsity Village. Those two residence options do not automatically include a meal plan, and they just need to let us know um, if they need to add one for an additional cost. Um, I think that it looks like you see it on your bill, so that's perfect. And if they want that, there's nothing they need to do. For meal plans, my two cents, um, you're gonna get my admissions two cents in here. Uh, I like the unlimited uh, in the dining commons for freshman students. Um, one, they're gonna be getting used to their schedule, making friends. Uh, and if they go to lunch and then they go to class and they get out of class and then their friends are like, hey, we're going to the dining commons, come join us for lunch. It's nice with the unlimited where they can go in, be able to kind of be social, pop back and forth. Uh, be able to kind of learn everyone's schedules, um, their friends' schedules, um, be able to kind of get adjusted to living on campus. Uh, so I personally recommend for all freshman students just keeping the unlimited. I think it works out really easy um, and there's no extra sweat. As Jacob mentioned that there's 12, the next level, the purple one would be 12. And I believe Jacob, that means it's 12 swipes per week, right? Per week, correct. Per week. Yeah. yeah. And and honestly, you can always, I mean, they, they do accept like cash and credit card in the Gallagher Center if a student's just like buying something there, but you can always add money to their Gallagher Gold account because there is a sales tax savings on that. So you can load $50 on there if they run low um, and that, that money's good through the end of May for the academic year. Um, so I would recommend like what Kyle is saying, staying on the unlimited. And if they do run low on Gallagher Gold at the end of the semester, a little bit of extra can always be added if they choose to do that. Um, it looks like there is a question, um, can they opt out or is it mandatory? The meal plan is, it's, it basically is mandatory. It's included in room and board, it's all one cost. The really only exception would be, there would have to be a serious, health issue or some sort of extenuating circumstance that our dining hall team absolutely cannot accommodate. Um, so if that is the case, I would recommend having a conversation with student affairs to see what they the are. They are very accommodating, we know yes. that. Yes, uh -huh. yeah, they, they, will, they will meet, like the chef will meet with students that have special dietary restrictions and they will, they will work on a plan. They are very accommodating. 
There's a question in here on water bottles. Can is there a place on campus to fill those up? Absolutely. Uh, we have the what the water fill, refilling stations uh, uh, around campus in certain areas, um, certain spots. I know in the residence halls there's some water fountains as well. Um, so there's definitely some spots to be able to kind of just stay hydrated for sure. Um, really quickly, there's one sent to me directly, um, student fees, uh, for like a sports management fee or you know, if sport fees will show up soon. Um, like um, intramural fee, like club fees or something like that. This one just says, would we know if sport fees will show up soon? So I don't know if they're just like a division one athlete, if there's fees according to that. There shouldn't be. I, Jacob, you want to take that one? Yeah, so if there's, so we do have certain students that need to pay, sometimes there's club dues, it could be sports related or non sports related. Yeah, it's or on, there could you're be, on club hockey. They just okay, so club through. hockey. So there is actually, um, that won't be something on the tuition bill, there will be a link that the student will be able to access on their my and you account um, in order to pay those dues or fees that they need to pay. So that is set up for them on my NU. I would recommend if they're unsure where to access that, have a conversation with their coach. Um, they'll be able to direct them exactly where they need to go and what they need to pay. Um, there's a question from a little bit ago. How exactly does that work? Just go in order. I'm assuming you're talking about like, um, if you go to the dining commons, uh, you know, if you don't have a meal plan, uh, you would just go there and, um, you know, pay the entrance fee, how much it is to get mm -hmm. in. They can, you know, have access to whatever is available that day. Um, yeah. And it's, it's buffet style. So they mm -hmm. kind of just go through a line and pick whatever, whatever they want. And then I'm seeing on the account summary, oh, hold on, I lost it. Sorry. On the account summary, there's charges for the parking pass and health insurance. So the health insurance, if you recently completed the opt-out, it could take up to two weeks for the charge to be reversed from your account because um, there's a process that the broker has to go through to verify things, and then they have to relay that information to us. So there is a little bit of a delay. Um, the parking pass, um, if you're, I, I'm not sure if you're asking if it will be on the account and you're not seeing it, um, but if it hasn't been added and the student already elected for a parking pass, it should be added within the next couple of weeks. It'll definitely be on there before school starts. And then there's a question about um, like box lunches for after dark students. Does Katie or Kyle, do you know about that? I believe there's some sort of program, but that would be something that you could reach out to METS directly, um, be able to connect with them. If you just Google METS, Niagara University, it'll direct you to that section on the different side. Um, and on the right-hand side, there should be a contact us section and be able to email them. Um, or when the student is here, they can always just go up and ask a METS employee um, if that is an option for them. I believe I've, I've heard of something similar, but it's been a couple of years since I've been on campus at that time to eat some food. so. Um, I definitely would have them connected uh, with METS. Um, can scholarships grants be put towards room board or only tuition? So institute, the majority of institutional scholarships are going towards tuition um, and potentially fees sometimes, um, unless it's a specific award that's for room and board. Um, but if you're talking about like outside private scholarships that student is receiving, um, they would, um, it depends on the, the language of that particular scholarship. So some specifically say it's for tuition only or tuition fees, but if it's phrased that it can be used for educational expenses, then that typically means room and board um, can be included as well. Um, I will say if you are um, a commuter student and you're thinking about being a resident, contact our office and we will see, we can you know update your, potentially update or, or estimate your financial aid package to see if you are eligible for any increased institutional grants due to having the, the room and board cost. It really depends on your financial need and your EFC. Um, there's a whole calculation that goes into it. So if that's what you're talking about, definitely reach out to our office. We'll see if it, can, if it changes your package or not. Um, but again, if it's outside privates, it depends on the language. And it is never too late no. to uh, <laughs> potentially live on campus. Uh, so it is, you still have time. Um, 
I think starting with that, Kyle, maybe start with Res Life. Um, yeah, if you um, want to get connected with your admissions counselor, we can definitely get you connected. Uh, but definitely Residence Life is where we would go and direct you. Um, so you can email just residencelife at niagara.edu and say, hey, we'd like to live on campus. Uh, and they would be able to email you the housing application where you can click and fill out the housing application to get that completed. Um, and then ultimately, they'd be able to let financial aid and student accounts know that you'd be uh, living on campus. But it is not too late. You can add, uh, you know, living on campus at any time. Um, so being able to uh, to do that is a great experience. I always recommend for freshman students to, you know, if you're going to live on campus at least one year, do it freshman year. That way, if you like it, you can stay. Um, and after that, your sophomore year, if you want to commute from home, you can commute from there. So please feel free. If they have questions and just want to talk about it, I know Katie and Jacob are really good at doing some comparison packages and adding in there that extra charges so you can check that out. So if that's a conversation where it's coming down to cost and you'd like to discuss that, you can definitely reach out to any of us and we'd be happy to be able to uh, show you the, the cost difference. All right, any other questions? Because I think we've made it to, to the end of that. So if you do have any last minute questions, get those in and we'll definitely um, you know, be able to assist. Um, we know questions come up as things go along, as you start going through the process. So feel free to reach out to our offices, um, any one of our offices, and we will you know, be more than happy to help you. If you wanna make an appointment with um, the financial aid office, whether it's virtually or um, in person, that's fine. Um, please make sure that um, you contact us though for an appointment. Um, we do have just, you know, uh, limited uh, appointments during, you know, if like today we had like several people show up at the same time so, and only some of them had called ahead. So make sure you do that. Otherwise, uh, we won't be able, might not be able to accommodate you if you just show up. Um, but if you have a, you know, you want to contact us, we can arrange something. Wait, I had a quick question sent to me about Microsoft Office. Uh, I believe that is still um, provided. Um, the Microsoft Office where they have Word, PowerPoint. Uh, provided for four years for free. So if any graduation gifts are including a laptop and they're trying to upsell you on that Microsoft Office package, you can politely decline that. Uh, it will be provided for the students uh, for four years. That's been the case the past couple of years. Um, I'm pretty sure that that'll still be an option. Um, IT would definitely know that for sure, but I'm, I'm really positive that that's something that we still are able to, to accommodate the students for. Then there was another question where the meal plans emailed already. Uh, the, if your student is living on campus, they are automatically uh, going to have a meal plan. Um, so it is incorporated into, into the, the, the bill there. Yep. Mm -hmm. those, will be, those will be active right before the first day of class. So you'll see the charge, like for some reason, your students on campus over the summer, mm -hmm. they will not be able to use that meal plan. It won't be active until right before class has begun. Um, is there a computer that is recommended? Um, anything uh, that, you know, the student is comfortable, you know, that is with, uh, within your financial means. Uh, being able to have a laptop uh, is really, uh, it's a nice feature to have, but it's not required. Uh, we do have a library on campus. We do have plenty of computers spread across campus. We have, uh, you know, your, your standard Windows computers, Microsoft computer or uh, Mac computers as well. Um, so if, you know, affording a laptop, is that in um, you know an option for you? Please know that there are plenty of computers that you can use in the library. Those computers you could have access to them all day and all night. Um, but if you do want to have a laptop, um, it's whatever the student is really comfortable. We don't really tend to recommend one over the other. Um, business school said not to buy Microsoft as it is part of the business school program fee. Perfect. Yeah, um, if that's what they told you, then. They would know best. <laughs> Great. Well, I know that we've been able to jump through a lot of questions tonight and be able to help you out. Um, as Katie and Jacob mentioned, we are here for you. We're not disappearing after this chat. So if anything does pop up, please feel free to call admissions, financial aid, or student accounts. We'd be happy to direct any of your questions and get them answered as quickly as we can. Just as a reminder, the university is uh, in the summer. We have some adjusted hours. So on Fridays, we are open 8.30 to noon, and then Monday through Thursday, we are 8.30 to 4.30. So feel free to email us or call, uh, and we'd be happy to, to help get those answered. We truly thank you for tuning in tonight, being able to ask all those questions. We love questions. Uh, we love being able to help out as much as we can. Um, so 
please know that we will, we, I, especially in admissions and all the admissions team, we are here for your students all the way until classes start. So just because you've deposited and you said you come in and you came to orientation doesn't mean you're done with us yet. We are, we're here and we're still a helpful resource. So if you're not sure where to direct your question, please feel free to direct it towards your, your students uh, admissions counselor and we'd be happy to help. So Katie and Jacob, thank you so much uh, for your, all your detailed responses, um, really being able to, to comb through all of those questions. I don't see anything else as I was wrapping this up come through. So I think at this point we'll be able to call it a night and everybody enjoy the rest of your evening and thank you so much for tuning in.